I can use the ultimate table saw tenon jig for cutting angled tenons like this, such as you might have if you were making a dining chair, for example. To do this, I fit an auxiliary fence. The auxiliary fence itself is just a piece of scrap MDF with a couple of wedges screwed to it, which are the required angle. And we've got the sacrificial backstop as usual and the clamp. Make sure that these screws are not below the cut line because as you can see here, this gets cut into on the second cut of the tenon. The second tenon cheek will cut into the jig. So you don't want any screws anywhere near your, the teeth of your blade. And then that just gets screwed to the main jig. A couple of spacers to keep it up off the table so it doesn't create more friction. And then just screwed in from the back. There we go. The workpiece has got the bottom end cut at the required angle to match the wedges. And that goes in there like that. I've installed a 3 8 inch dado stack and fitted it with a bespoke throat plate. I've also recalibrated the curve compensation stop. You can see that it sticks out an awful lot more than it did before. And that's because I've got a 3 8 stack and therefore this is uh, sticking out 3 8 of an inch. Uh, but we're still going to use the quarter inch spacer to cut a quarter inch tenon. You'll notice that I can't use my guard. It doesn't go round when this is on. So I never use my blade unguarded. So I've got my magnetic standalone guard like that. And when you set it up, I have to make sure that it doesn't foul the workpiece or this guard. I found that out the hard way. <laughs> so actually that can go in a, a wee bit. Good, 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 good. So you know, the only way I can get my hand in there is if I do so absolutely deliberately. So let's give it a whirl. Let's give it a whirl. Start with the jig closed, as usual. Eyes and ears. Well, I don't know, I'll do a close-up of this. Um, I've got a few stray hairs on this side, but that side is as clean as a whistle. And of course, if I'd gone to the trouble of um, scribing it first, scribing the shoulders, then both sides would have been clean. But that is straight off the saw. I think it's pretty good, don't you? Once the workpiece starts to become a little bit more substantial, I sometimes like to swap out a standard mortise and tenon and use a double mortise and tenon instead. Now a double mortise and tenon is when I've got two tenons side by side and this has a couple of advantages and one enormous challenge. <laughs> the advantages are that you automatically double the surface area for your glue so that makes it if you like twice as strong but more than that it spreads the load of the joint throughout the thickness of the workpiece. So, I mean, I've not done any calculations on this, but I suspect that a double mortise and tenon is more than twice as strong as a single mortise and tenon. 
To do this, we use a, a separate spacer. We've got the one for the tenons, and we've also got one which is the distance from the center of one tenon to the center of the other. And that we start by cutting the mortises over there on the mortiser. This is the setup on my mortiser. I've got two mortises to cut, and I'm starting by cutting the one that's closest to me, which is furthest away from the face of the workpiece. I've set up my mortiser for width like that, and I've set it to depth. There's a depth stop over here, and I'm going to go right the way through. So I've got a piece of scrap underneath to try and give me a clean exit wound, as it were. Uh, and I've also got a positioning stop clamped here because I need to reposition this in a moment and it needs to go back in exactly the same place. And all that these bits down here do is lift it up um, sufficiently for the chisel here. Right, well, let's give it a whirl, shall we? Right, that's the first of our mortises, and that's really rather nicely clean. So the next thing to do is to move this away from this fence by the same distance as we want from the center of one mortise to the center of the other mortise. Now, in this case, that's three quarters of an inch because I want three eighths tenon, three eighths space, three eighths tenon. So we take that out for a moment. You don't change anything about the machine itself. Just bring the workpiece forward. Come ça. And we're still located against this, admittedly only just, but we are. And so now I cut the other mortise there. And so we've now got our double mortises and we use the same spacer to cut our double tenons. So this is going to be my joint and we're going to have a little reveal each side of about a sixteenth of an inch and this is my face. So I need to mark the tenon furthest away from the face, the tenon cheek, and that is going to be there. Like that. And that's what I'm going to line up with the blade of my saw. So now we install the workpiece. Now you will notice that I've put in a beefier um, sacrificial stop at the back because the one that was in before was too narrow for this workpiece. So that's going in there. And I've also mounted the toggle clamp on a thicker piece as well. So my workpiece goes in there like that. And we have to line it up to cut the outside cheek of the furthermost tenon, just like before. If only I could see properly, eh? It took me a few minutes to sort that out, but you've got to get it bang on that pencil mark. And, and now it is. So my fence is locked off. And uh, the, the jig, of course, is closed. I need to make sure that my guard is put back in place because I swung it out of the way to see what I was doing. And I've set the height of the blade to be a fraction more than the thickness of my workpiece because I want them to go through. Right, so 
There are two mortises to cut and the first one is done in exactly the same way as a standard tenon. And now we open the jig a bit more and take that out and put this one in. This is the same spacer as I used over there. And it goes in behind the knob, not between the knob and the backstop here, but behind it so that the uh, curve compensation knob still sticks out a bit beyond our reference face here. And for the last cut, that one and that one together. Now let's see what it looks like. <laughs> well, I hope you can see that. That looks pretty darn good to me. I can actually use the jig to cut out this middle bit here. Uh, let's see if I can adjust it for that. And now I've just got to cut the shoulders and finesse it with a chisel. But I think that's pretty darn good, don't you? See you in a minute. This jig cuts the tenon cheeks perfectly. But of course, I still have to cut the shoulders. If I have a batch to do, I might set up my crosscut fence on the table saw and then trim the width on my bandsaw. But for this demonstration, I'm doing all the shoulder cuts on the bandsaw. I can finesse the shoulders with my mitre jack if I need to. And there's the finished double tenon. I'm very pleased with that. Now because there are two tenons, there's twice as much friction as there would be otherwise, so it is a bit tighter, which is all to the good really, as long as it's not so tight that it won't go in. Yeah. Oh, I've just split that, look. That'll have, to have a bit of glue. But that's rather nice, don't you think? Isn't that good? And when that's wedged and cleaned up, that'll look beautiful. Phew, that was a long one, wasn't it? And if you think it was long to watch, you should consider the fact that I spent months making this film, not just weeks. <laughs> I did warn you it was a long film. If you have watched until now, I assume that means that you are serious about building the ultimate table saw tenon jig. And if you do, you will not be disappointed. When I die, I shall know that I've left something good behind for woodworking kind. And this is at the very top of that list. It really is the best in the world for all the reasons I spoke about earlier. If you want to build it, the plans are available on my website. And if you do build it, then if you have any problems at all, then get in touch. I've used Skype, WhatsApp, email, just get in touch. And if I can help you, I most certainly will. You can build this jig out of MDF. If you do use moisture resistant MDF, it's a far superior product. But if you can spring for this high pressure laminate, then I suggest that you do so. It is, a, it is superb. And yes, it's expensive stuff, but you don't need very much. And there are companies online which will cut to size for you. So you can just buy part of a sheet. You don't have to buy a whole sheet. So it shouldn't actually cost you that much money, even though it's an expensive product. All the processes involved are straightforward. So it's not a difficult build. I know it looks complex, 
but it's cutting, it's routing, it's drilling, and yes, there is a little bit of tapping. And if you, but tapping is not difficult. And if you really don't want to tap, just embed a nut instead. It will, it'll still work just as well. If you want a fancy brass knob like mine, you'll have to have a mate with a lathe. Thank you, Andy. And if you want bespoke plastic knobs, you need a mate with a 3D printer. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> but the truth is, all this hardware is readily available. Any flat face knob will, will do. And Bristol levers, toggle clamps, knobs, you know, you can buy them all over the place. It's, none of it is difficult. <sighs> Thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, cut your tenons right first time, every time, and enjoy your workshop. Cheerio!